What's going on guys? Today we'll go over practice test number three, section three from the official college board exams. So for this video, we'll quickly go over the easy questions and get more in depth, more in detail on the harder questions. So let's get straight into it. What's up guys? John from Admission Hackers. Quick announcement before we start. You're about to see one of the fastest ways to solve these SAT questions. And I have created a six week program that will train you to solve them the exact same way. Everything is in the video format, so it's easier to follow than your SAT prep books. And the program only covers what's proven to be tested on the SAT to not waste your time and raise your score quickly. Also, I'll be mentoring you personally until you get your target score, but more details in the description box down below. That's it, let's get to the video. Number one, the question says a painter will paint end walls with the same size and shape of the building using a specific brand of paint. The painter's fee can be calculated with the expression right here, where N is the number of walls, K is the constant with units of dollars per square feet, and L is the length of each wall in feet, and H is the height of each wall in feet. If a customer asked the painter to use more expensive brand of paint, which the following factors in the expression would change, right? So if she's just using a different paint, then we know the number of wall is not gonna change, the length of each wall is not gonna change either, and the height of the wall is not gonna change. So K is the only one that could possibly change. So answer is going to be choice C. Next question. If 3R is equal to 18, what's the value of 6R plus 3, right? So 6R is what? Well, it's just 2 times that, which will be 36 plus 3, which will be 39. Answer is choice D. Number 3, which of the following is equal to 8 to the 2 thirds for all values of A? We have to just convert it to radical version, and we know the bottom is going to be the radical. So it's going to be cube root of A to the second power for the 2 right there. Answer is going to be choice D. So number four, the number of states that joined the United States between 1776 and 1849 is twice the number of states that joined between 1850 and 1900. So 76 all the way through 49 is going to be what? Twice the number of states that joined between 50 through 1900. And if 30 states joined the United States between 76 and 49, which will be right here, and X states joined between 1850 and 1900, which will be right there, which the following equation is going to be true. Well, this part is equal to two times whatever this is. So we like that, which will be just 30 is equal to 2x. And that looks like choice B right there. B is going to be your answer. Number five, if five over x is equal to that, which the following is value of this. Okay, so we just need to find the value of x and plug it in. So we're gonna cross multiply here. Five parentheses x plus 20 is equal to 15x, which becomes five x plus 100 is equal to 15x, subtract 5x, we get 100 is equal to 10x, x is equal to 100 over 10, which is going to be 10. Is that our answer? No, we have to plug it in. 10 over 5 is going to be 2. Number 6, if x and y is the solution to the system of equations above right here, what's the value of x minus y? So we just need to find x and find y, plug it in, find your answer. And to do that, we're gonna just do elimination here. So we're gonna multiply that by three and multiply this by two. So the top equation is gonna look like six x minus nine y is equal to negative 42. And the bottom is going to be six x minus four y is equal to negative 12. And I'm gonna subtract the whole thing to get rid of x, which will become zero minus five y is equal to negative 30. Y becomes six, right? And how do we find x? Just plug into one of the equations. So y is equal to six. If you just plug in here, it will be three x minus 12 is equal to negative six. Add 12, add 12, we get three x is equal to positive six, x is equal to two. So x is going to be two, y is six, two minus six will be negative four, answer is choice C. All right, let's go to number seven. The function f is defined by a polynomial, okay? Some values of x and f of x are shown in the table above, which of the following must be a factor of f of x, which means one of these choices are going to be a factor of this function right there. And how can we find out what the factor is? Well, in here, we can use the remainder theorem, which tells us that whatever value of x that makes the result equal to zero, we can use this to find out what the factor is. And when you look at this portion right there, when x is equal to four, that means your y value is going to be equal to zero. And based on this information, when your x is equal to four, that tells us that our y is equal to zero, which means our remainder is equal to zero. And we can use this information to say x minus four is going to be a factor of the polynomial function f, which means our answer is going to be choice C. If you're not sure about this portion, go back to synthetic division and review the remainder theorem. So in the line right here, where k is a constant, is graph on the xy plane. If the line contains the point C and D where C and D are not equal to zero, what is the slope of the line in terms of C and D? So in this question, what we're looking for is the slope, which can be found with the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And to use this formula, we need to know two coordinates. So 
first coordinate is going to be point C and D right there, which will be C comma D. But what about the second coordinate? Well, if you look at this equation right here, we can tell that, oh, our y-intercept is going to be four, which means our graph is going to look something like that. And our y-intercept is going to have a coordinate of zero, four. So that's going to be the second coordinate. So zero, four. And we just use that to the equation right there, which is going to give us D minus four over C minus zero, which gives us D minus four over C, which is going to be our answer, which is choice A. Number nine, in the system above, k is a constant, x and y are variables. For which value of k will the system of equations have no solution? So we know that our system is going to be a set of two lines because both of our x's are going to be the first power. And when it comes to two lines having no solution, we can use the matching rule from the systems of equations chapter. And the matching rule tells us that, okay, when the coefficients of the x and y are the same, then they're going to have no solution, which looks like k over four is equal to negative three over negative five, which is the same thing as just positive three over five, right? And if we cross multiply, we get five k is equal to positive 12, k is equal to 12 over five. Our answer is going to be choice A. Number 10, in the xy plane, the parabola with the equation of this intersects with the line with the equation of this at two points, A and B. So what's the length of AB? So if we were to visualize what goes on here, we have a parabola, which looks something like that, and intersects the line at two points, which would be here and right here. Those two points are known as A and B, and we are looking for the distance between those two points, which is represented right there. And to find the distance, we need to know where A and B are. So how do we find the intersection points between the two? We just set them equal to each other. Parentheses x minus 11 squares equal to 25. So here we can go about two different ways. First, we can either try to expand everything out and try to find the value of x. The only problem with that is numbers are getting big and we want to stay away from big numbers from the non-calc section. The other way to do it and the simpler way to do it is by thinking about, okay, what value squared will give me 25? And we know that, okay, if five is squared, it will give us 25. And when negative five is squared, it will give us 25 as well. So we will just try to make the inside equals to five or make the inside equal to negative five and that will tell us what the x values are. So from here, we know that, okay, we add 11, we know that x is going to be 16, or if we add 11 here, we know that x is going to be positive six. And these are going to be your x coordinates, which means over here, our x is going to be at six and 16, which means the distance between the two points are going to be 10, which means the length of AB is going to be 10, answer is going to be choice A. Let's go to number 11. We know that x plus y is equal to u plus w. So x and y are equal to u and w, which of the following must be true. So before we go any further, let's break this down a little bit more. So based on these angles, we know that y and u are going to be the same because they are vertical angles, which means x and w are also going to be equal to each other. So we know y is equal to u and we know x is equal to w. And we also know that x is going to be equal to t as vertical angles and w is going to be equal to z as vertical angles. So that's what we know about these angles right here. Let's check out the Roman numerals. So x is equal to z. So is x equal to z? Well, let's think about it. Well, we know x is equal to w and w is equal to z, which means x and z are going to be the same. So number one is going to be true. So choice c is going to be out. What about number two? y is equal to w. Well, it doesn't tell us that y is equal to w. So number two is going to be out, which means one and D is going to be out, which means choice B is the only possible answer. We don't even have to check for three. So that'll be your answer. Number 12, in the quadratic equation above, A is a non-zero constant. The graph of the equation in the XY plane is a parabola with a vertex of C and D, which the following is equal to D. So we have a parabola, right? That has a root where? At positive two and minus four. That means at positive two right there and minus four right there, the graph is going to intersect the x axis like so. And the vertex is going to be located right here. Now the question is asking us to find the value of D and we know that D is going to be the y coordinate of the vertex. So vertex is going to be C comma D right there and we're looking for the y coordinate. And how can we find the y coordinate of the vertex? Well, we need to know what the x coordinate is so we can plug it to the equation right there and find out what the y coordinate is. And the thing about parabola is that the vertex is located in, in the right middle of the two roots. So if we find the midpoint of these two points right there, which will be two plus minus four divided by two, which will be just minus two over two, which is minus one, that will give us the midpoint of the two roots or the X coordinate of the vertex. So now that we know the X coordinate, we just plug it into our function right there and that will give us the answer. So Y is equal to A parentheses minus one minus two 
minus one plus four. And if we do that, we know that it's a parentheses minus three, and it's going to be positive three, which means our answer is going to be nine, negative nine A, which means our answer is going to be choice A. So number 13, we have this side equal to that side, and we're trying to find the value of A. So when you see this portion right there, we recognize that, oh, that is referring to the remainder. So we're gonna put it in the synthetic division form. A x minus two, providing by 24 x squared. And the right side tells us that, okay, what's going to be on the top is going to be minus eight x minus three. So minus eight x minus three. And in order for this to work out, minus eight x times a x has to be 24 x squared. That way, when you subtract it, these things get canceled out. And the value of a that would make the product equal to 24 x squared is going to be negative three. So answer is going to be choice B. Number 14, what are the solutions to this equation right here? Well, we're trying to find the value of x that makes the y equal to zero. And look at the answer choices. Seems like you have to use the quadratic formula here. So we'll just do that. Minus b minus 12 plus or minus b squared, 12 squared minus 4ac over 2a, which will be just six. That will be minus 12 plus minus square root of 144 minus 72 over six, which becomes minus 12 plus minus square root of 72 over six. And we know that square root of 72 is going to be same thing as six root two, which simplifies down to minus 12 plus or minus six root two over six. If you can simplify, we get that minus two plus minus square root of two. That'll be our answer, which is choice A. Number 15, so we have this equation right here and we're trying to find out which of the following is true. So number one, a temperature increase of one degree Fahrenheit is equivalent to a temperature increase of five ninth degree Celsius. So how do we check if it's true? Just plug in numbers. So let's pretend F is equal to 32 and F is equal to 33 so that they are one degrees off. And once it's 32 degrees, then it's going to be zero on the inside, which means your Celsius would be zero. So it would be zero. And when it's 33 degrees, then the inside will be just 33 minus 32 one and the celsius is going to be one times five ninth five over nine so it becomes five over nine so did it happen yeah one degrees in fahrenheit increased it by five ninth just like it did here so one checks out and if one is true that means choice b is out c is out we just have to check whether two is true or not so if you look at two it says increase of one degree celsius is the same thing as increase of 1.8 fahrenheit so to check that, we're gonna do the same thing by plugging in the numbers, but we're gonna to have to rearrange the equation first. We're gonna to try to leave the Fahrenheit alone. So to do that, we'll multiply by the reciprocal and get rid of 9 fifth on the other side. And to do that, we'll get rid of 5 ninth by multiplying it to the other side by the reciprocal. And we're gonna add 32 on both sides, which means our F is going to be equal to 9 fifth C plus 30. Two. And to test two, we're gonna plug in a value for Celsius. We're gonna set Celsius as zero and Celsius as one so that they are one apart. And when C is equal to zero, that means it's going to be zero here, which means your Fahrenheit will be just 32. And when your Celsius is equal to one, that means it's going to be one times nine fifth, which will be just nine over five plus 32, right? So when C is equal to one, it will be just 32 plus nine over five. And from here, we see that when we increase the Celsius just by one degrees, it goes from 32 to 32 plus nine fifth, which means it's gonna increase by nine fifth. And when that is converted to a decimal, it's going to be same as 1.8. So that tells us that choice two is going to be true as well, which means the answer is going to be choice D. And let's go to number 16. What is one possible solution to the equation above, which is right here? And to find that, we'll just expand everything out, move everything to one side, and find the value of x by isolating it. So let's expand it first, which will become x to the fifth minus 5x cubed. Move this to the other side, becomes plus 4x is equal to zero. And we see that we can factor out x, which becomes x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus four is equal to zero. And we can factor this, which becomes x squared minus four and x squared minus one is equal to zero. And from the equation, we see that x can be equal to zero, two or one would make the equation equal to zero. But because our x has to be greater than zero, zero can't work, which means the answer will be either two or one, either would work. And number 17, if this expression is equal to that, what's the value of x? Just isolate the x. So we can combine this into three over nine x is equal to, that will be three over 12. So add it becomes eight over 12. And we can simplify this into one, three and two, 
3, which becomes 1 over 3x is equal to 2 over 3. And we can just multiply 3 on both sides, which gives us x is equal to 2. That will be our answer. Number 18, two isosceles triangles are shown above. If this is equal to that, y is 75, what's the value of x, right? So isosceles triangle right here, sides are the same, and these two sides are going to be the same. So if y is equal to 75, we can plug it in here. We know that 180 minus z is equal to 2 times 75, 150. And what does z have to be? It has to be 30, right? So we know that coming back here, we know that this angle over here is going to be 30. And because it's an isosceles triangle, we know that these two angles will have to be the same. And because it's a triangle, it's going to be 180 degrees in total minus the 30 degrees, which will give us 150. And to find measure of one angle, we just divide by two, which gives us 75, which tells us that angle is going to be 75. And to find the value of X, the total is 180. So you just do 180 minus 75, which you get 105, which means the value of X is equal to 105. That's your answer. Let's go to number 19. At a lunch stand, each hamburger has 50 more calories than each order of fries. So that can be translated into hamburger is equal to 50 more than what fry has. And if two hamburgers and three orders of fries, so two hamburgers and three orders of fries have total of 1700 calories, how many calories does a hamburger have? We're looking for the value of H. And to find that, we'll just use substitution here, which becomes two parentheses F plus 50 plus 3f is equal to 1700, which becomes 2f plus 100 plus 3f is equal to 1700, which becomes 5f is equal to 1600. And f is equal to 1600 divided by 5, which becomes 315, 100 will be just 20, 320 like so. And to find the hamburger, we just plug f into right here. So 320 plus 50, which will be 370, it is going to be the hamburger's calories. So our answer is going to be 370. Now let's go to number 20. In triangle ABC, the measure of B is going to be 90. So we have triangle ABC. B is going to be 90 right there. And BC is 16 and AC is going to be 20. And triangle DEF is similar to ABC. So it's going to look exactly like that, just with different length whereas D, E, F are corresponding to A, B, and C, okay? So it will be just D, E, and F like so. And because these two triangles are similar, we know that they're going to have the same proportion, which means sine of F is going to be equal to sine of C. So if you're looking for sine F, we just need to find out what sine C is, and it will be representing sine F. So how do we find sine C? Well, sine C is just opposite over hypotenuse, and C is right there. Opposite is going to be A, B, which is going to be AB over hypotenuse, which is going to be 20. And how can we find out what AB is? Well, we have a right triangle here, which means we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find out the missing side. So AB squared plus 16 squared, which is equal to the hypotenuse squared. And AB squared plus 16 squared, which is 256 from the multiplication table. And 20 squared is just 400. And if we subtract 256 from both sides, we see that AB squared is going to be equal to 441. And square root of 144 is going to be just 12 because 12 squared is going to be 144. So we get that our AB is equal to 12 here, which means sine C is going to be 12 over 20, which simplifies to three over five. And that is going to be equal to sine C, which is also sine F. So three fifth will be our answer. So that's going to be it, but let me know what you guys think about this kind of video. Was it helpful, not helpful? in the comment section down below. Also give it a thumbs up if you found this video helpful and I'll see you on the next one. What's up guys, John from Admission Hackers. You just saw one of the fastest ways to solve these SAT questions. And I have created a six week program that will train you to solve them the exact same way. Everything is in the video format, so it's easier to follow than your SAT prep books. And the program covers only what is proven to be tested on the SAT to not waste your time and raise your score quickly. And I'll be mentoring you personally until you get your target score, but more details in the description box down below. That's it, I'll see you in the next one.